In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. St. Paul tells us in the Epistle, All that you do, in words or in works, do it in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. One person can do the same work as another, but for one, it can be a help in the Christian life. And for the other person, it can be either not taking them any further or even a hindrance. We can do the same thing, but for some, it helps us grow closer to God, and for others, not. Why is this? Some of it comes down to the reason we do things, the intention behind our actions. Take a simple example. We give money to charity. We can do this for three reasons, we might say. Firstly, we can do it because we love God, because the per people we help through our charity are made in the image and likeness of God. So we do it for the love of God. The second reason we might give to charity is out of human sympathy, trying to help another person. And the third reason we might do it is to try and look good. You know, I've given so and so, so much to charity, look at me. For the first, if we do it for the love of God, that obviously helps us grow in holiness. It helps us become a better Christian. The second reason to do it out of human sympathy is morally good, but it could be better if we did it for a deeper intention, a higher intention. But the third reason, doing it to look good, actually leads us to sin. It leads us to pride, doesn't it? So the same action is changed by the reason we do it, our intention. Jesus tells us elsewhere in the gospel that we should be faithful to him in the little things of life. He says, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been found faithful in small things. Now you will be given much greater. The actions of our daily life are not neutral in the spiritual life. It's not as if we have our Christian life over here and our ordinary life over here and they're kind of separate things. But our faith should permeate everything we do. But this doesn't mean that everything we do, it has to be, you know, preaching the gospel or praying, continue, praying uh, with, with no interruption. That's not exactly what it means. But our ordinary actions can be done with a good intention of serving God. The ordinary things of life must be made holy, sanctified, like doing the dishes, cleaning the house, our work, our classes at school or university, our conversations and friendships. All of these things, St. Paul says, whatever we do, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. We act in the name of Jesus, firstly, by acting according to the law, the moral law of God, by avoiding sin. But that's not enough. The next step in doing what we do, word or work in the name of Jesus, is by correcting our intention, why we do it. We call this purity of intention. Because we're God's children, we should do for God all that we do. In all our inter interactions, we should at least have the implicit intention of serving God, of doing his will of bringing him glory. The right intention makes our words and works holy and binds us ever more closely to God. At the beginning of each day, we should offer the whole day to serve God. I'm sure many of you do this already, making the morning offering. If you don't, if you look in your missal or your prayer book, you'll find daily prayers, probably a, a morning offering, an example of a prayer we can say to give the day ahead into God's hands, to offer our words, our works to God. But that's not enough just to start the day in that way, because we all know that we can be very easily distracted. We can start off really well saying, yes, Lord, the whole day is for you, but then we can sort of begin to find that we're doing things for ourselves. 
out of selfishness or pride or other things can sneak in as the day goes along. So we have to correct that intention throughout the day. Some of the saints had the practice that at the beginning of each hour, when the clock struck the hour, they would say a Hail Mary to offer the hour to God. It might be that when we begin a new work, a new class at school, or begin a new task at home, we make an offering in our minds of that work to God. Little prayers like, all for you, Jesus, in the name of God, making the sign of the cross. Little simple acts to remind us that this next action we do to serve God. And of course, the greatest way of offering our daily work, our daily actions to God, is by uniting them with Jesus in his offering of himself to God the Father. This offering of himself which we find in the Holy Mass. When we come to the offertory of the Mass, we can bring in spirit to the altar all that we've offered to God through the week, hour by hour, day by day. As the priest offers the bread to God at the offertory, we can offer our works. As the priest offers the chalice, we can offer God our sufferings. In this way, uniting what we do here in church with our daily life outside, bringing the offering of our day's works and words and sufferings to bring them, to unite them to Jesus' offering to the glory of God the Father in the Mass. St. Teresa of Avila teaches us the Lord doesn't consider so much the greatness of what we do but rather the love with which we do it. This is the secret to holiness in daily life. Brother Lawrence of the Resurrection in his book, The Practice of the Presence of God, says, Lord of all the pots and pans, make me a saint by getting meals and washing up the plates. With purity of intention, every action, even the simplest, even the most mundane, can become a means of serving God. Everything can be for his glory. We're all called by God to become saints, to become holy, but we don't have to wait for our next retreat or a moment of conversion or beginning a new vocation. We can start today, here and now, by offering the events of this day to the glory of God. So let us offer each day to God, each action, each hour, so that our very lives may become a praise of his glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Don't forget to click subscribe, and click the bell to be notified of future videos.